This video was sponsored by Skillshare, the online learning community with thousands of classes in design, business, technology, and more. They've been generous enough to give a free two-month premium membership to the first 500 viewers to sign up using the link down in the description. Thank you to Skillshare for keeping Mobox alive, and let's get into the video. Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Mike from Mobox and we're back with another video, this time looking at this sort of gradient sun looking thing. I don't know, it looks kind of crazy, um, but it uses a gradient, uses some displacement maps and stuff like that to kind of give a pretty cool effect. In this example, it looks like a sun because we're using red and yellow, but um, you'll see here that if you change the colors, um, it could look totally different. So we're just gonna jump in here to After Effects and you'll see here that um, we have step one, step two, step three, and step four already set up here. If you want to download this project file, you can over on our Patreon and you could follow along. But I'm going to leave these here so that way we can reference them. But also if you download the project file, you can um, see them as well. So let's go ahead and get started by creating a new composition. And I'm going to name this tutorial. And I'm going to change the composition size to 1920 by 1080. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit OK and kind of rearrange my workspace here. And I'm gonna start by creating a new shape layer and I'm gonna use a rectangle. Um, that size is about right. Uh, we don't really need to be too particular here, um, but what we do wanna do is make sure it's set up into the center of the composition. And I'm gonna move the anchor point to the bottom by using this tool by Mount MoGraph called Motion V2. Um, if you don't have it, you could press Y on the keyboard and move the anchor point to the bottom. And I'm going to drag this layer up top and set a position keyframe and set a scale keyframe. Now, um, one thing I didn't note here is that this composition is 10 seconds long. That's how long I'd like it to be. It kind of helps if you follow along in that general narrative because as we start pre-composing these things, we're gonna be messing with different composition links and this kind of creates a seamless link and I've already tested it. So I'm gonna to go to the end here and I'm gonna move this down and I'm gonna uncheck this little chain icon and I'm gonna set this one to zero. So what this chain icon does is basically unlink the X and Y coordinates of the scale. So you can see here that this is going to just slowly move down ever so slightly and as it's way down, it's going to shrink. And I'm just gonna select all of these layers and I'm going to add a little bit of smoothing here with this Mount MoGraph tool. Um, if you don't have it, you can go into the graph editor and try to copy this graph for both the scale and the position. And that just kind of makes it look a little bit more dynamic. Um, next things up, I'm actually going to add a fill to this just so I could easily change the colors later, just like that. And now I'm going to pre-compose this by hitting Control Shift C, Control Shift C, let's try that again, Control Shift C, need to have the layer selected, Control Shift C, um, and move all attributes to the new composition. So now I have just this one layer going up and down and I'm gonna duplicate this five times. One, two, three, four, five. So now I have six distinct layers and I'm gonna offset them each by two seconds. So I wanna make this a seamless loop. So I'm now going to trim this comp down to four seconds. So I'm just gonna to go to four seconds and hit N on the keyboard and just move this over one more frame. And I'm gonna select all of these and move them until the top layer ends as soon as the composition ends. And you'll see here that now this is kind of gonna be looping for us. Which is perfect. I'm actually gonna just pre-compose this again, Control Shift C and move all attributes to layer, which is perfect. And now I am going to start making things look crazy. So I'm gonna start by creating a layer new null object and a layer new adjustment layer. I'm gonna move the pre-comp between the two and for the null object, I'm gonna add a slider controller. And on the pre-comp, I'm gonna add something called an HLS color balance. Strike that over. Now, holding Alt, I'm gonna select the hue, and I'm gonna type an expression here. Um, I'm gonna say index multiplied by this slider control value. And so basically what that means is as I change this slider control, I'm gonna change the hue. But what it also means is that the hue will change depending on the layer number, the index. So um, the index of this layer here is two, the index of this layer is one. So since I have an adjustment layer on top, I'm gonna to actually do a parentheses around here and do index minus one, because that'll fix any effects that this index, that this um, adjustment layer will have on the colors. So now I could just duplicate this like, I don't know, 
a bunch of times. I'm gonna create eight layers. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I did that by hitting Control D. And I am going to offset these layers by approximately five frames. So if you remember, we're running at 25 frames per second. And so this is approximately a fifth of a second that these are gonna be delayed off of. Okay, so that looks pretty crazy there. Um, so I need to actually just select all of these layers and just kind of move them over. And then I'm also gonna trim this comp down to two seconds now by hitting N on the keyboard and just moving that over. And I'm gonna have to move this over until this loops pretty seamlessly, which it looks like it's looping pretty seamlessly right now. Um, so the reason why the colors haven't changed is because the slider control on this is set to zero. So if I set this to something like five, you can see here now that we get that beautiful gradient. So I might have to duplicate this a few more times. Um, basically, I want there to be no gaps. So I'm gonna hit Control Z until I see all the beginnings of my layers again. And I'm just gonna select all of these hit and hit Control D and drag them below and move them over. And I need to go back to my slider control and set that to five. And we almost don't have a gap. So instead of creating even more layers, I'm just going to go into um, this layer here and adjust kind of these keyframes because these keyframes is what all of the layers are kind of basing themselves off of. So I'm just gonna reset this a little bit. I'm just gonna change it. Um, it's just slightly adjusted. And so now let's see if we get away with So it looks like we got rid of the those lines there. So um, again, I'm gonna move this down to two seconds. And I'm gonna select all of these layers and just move them over. And we may have too many layers now, but it's not really that big of a deal. Um, but while I'm here, I should probably hit uh, Control S to save my composition. And I'm just gonna close these other pre-comps out because I don't think I'm gonna need them anymore. So that's what we have. Um, and I'm not gonna lie to you, this is not that you, nice on your RAM, but if I have uh, 64 gigs of RAM, so for me, it's not, not a problem, but we are duplicating a lot of layers here. So just an FYI. So now I'm going to pre-compose these again by hitting Control Shift C. And now we're going to start adding our cool effects. So the whole point of making these like abstract loops is you start by making a cool pattern and a cool looping pattern. And then what you do from there is you, is you add effects on top of that and that kind of transitions that into something really interesting. So it's a little bit hard to explain, but the effects that I'm gonna place on this will look totally different if this bass is different. And so what's really cool is that you could change the bass and you create something totally different and unique. So for this composition, I'm gonna make it actually eight seconds. And here's the reason being, is that this thing, so it started from being just 10 seconds um, long, but since there's now there's so many layers, it's so much more kind of effective. Um, there's so many more kind of craziness going on. So what I do, what I like to do is, is actually remap the time. So if I right click and go to time and enable time remapping, at two seconds, which we remember from our previous comp, made it loop properly, I'm just gonna set a keyframe and I'm gonna delete the last keyframe. Um, and then I'm gonna move this over all the way to eight seconds. So basically I'm taking the first two seconds and I'm just making it last much longer. Let me actually go into this layer here and on this adjustment layer, that's what I forgot to do is, is add my fast box blur. I'm gonna repeat on edge pixels and I'm just gonna blur this up just a little bit. So now when I come back into here, you see I get this gradient. So I could have made this um, in many different ways, and I'm sure there's a lot easier ways to do it, a lot more CPU um, le less CPU intensive ways of doing this. This was kind of a roundabout way of getting here, but basically when you're going through these like abstract designs, oftentimes you're experimenting with different things and Sometimes it doesn't just come by, you know, hey, I want to do this one thing. Let me find the most efficient way of doing it. I think that if I did this, you know, again and again and again, I would find more efficient ways of making a gradient that looks like this. Um, but what I wouldn't have would be something that was, you know, so customized underneath the hood. It just so happens that on this effect, it looks better when this is blurred.
So before we go any further, I need to tell you about Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes in design, business, technology, and more, including classes on After Effects and Cinema 4D. I happen to like these, which were created by some of the best teachers from our community, but there are hundreds more like this one on other topics, like this one on productivity, which I could definitely benefit from. What's great about Skillshare is that it's also more affordable than most other learning platforms out there, as the annual subscription is actually less than $10 a month. Skillshare was generous enough to offer the first 500 people a two-month free trial when they sign up using the link in the description. The premium membership gives you unlimited access to high-quality classes from experts working in their fields, so you can improve your skills, unlock new opportunities, and do the work you love. So what are you waiting for? Sign up and be sure to let us know which classes you found most useful by sharing them in the comments down below. So now I'm gonna add some effects here to make it look like it does in the final composition. The first is Wave Warp. And so Wave Warp's really interesting because there's actually different wave types here. And for this one, I use Smooth Noise because I think that it works the best. And I changed this wave height to like something like 400, which creates really crazy up and down waves. And then the wave width to maybe like 180. And then um, I offset the direction. No, I leave the direction at 90, but then I change the wave speed to zero. And you know, you could change the phaser there if you want, but anti-aliasing is set to high. And then the other effect that I add on here is called turbulent displace, which is a fairly common effect. And I set this amount to somewhere around 200, the size about 75. And I increase the complexity to, you know, something like 10. So that is right there, kind of what you're now recognizing from the original piece of the video. So I'm gonna set this to high as well. Um, judging from what kind of effects it has, it doesn't look like it makes that big of an effect. So I'm gonna set it to leave that to low and let's see what this one does. So it looks like that doesn't change much either. So I'm gonna set them both to low actually. I think that'll save some CPU cycles. So let's see what this looks like. All right, one way to make this a little bit more interesting is changing the evolution on this turbulent displacement. So I'm gonna go into the evolution options and click the cycle evolution and set a keyframe for the evolution at the beginning and go to the end and set a keyframe um, for one full circle. And what we're gonna get is we're gonna get something that is a lot more dynamic and interesting. Okay, so we're almost there. So now we're going to look for an effect called CC sphere drop this on top and we're going to just change some of the lighting conditions here. I'm going to change the light intensity to zero and bring up the ambient temperature and then bring up the radius. So I'm going to set this composition size by changing the composition down to a thousand by 1000 because I want to share this on Instagram and I'm going to bring the radius down a little bit. So now we get something that looks really similar to what our kind of video or our kind of step four was our final step on the what you saw in the beginning. So we did a lot of things here to make sure the colors looked interesting. Um, but what you'll notice here is that if we go into some of these deeper layers back to this original one with this color, um, we could do some interesting things. So when I select this tutorial layer and I hit this little lock icon, it will actually lock this here. So I can open up this composition and change the colors and you could see that how it affects that composition. So blue tends to look a little crazy. Um, that blue looks a little bit better. See green, probably something crazy. Um, orange, probably really similar to what we had. Let's go back to this kind of blue and let me show you another thing that we did that you might not have remembered. On this null object, we set the the gradient here to be based on the index layer as well as the slider. So I can increase this slider and increase the kind of difference between each layer's colors. So you can get something that looks really interesting like this purple and blue. And then again, if you go back to the original and you change the color to let's say purple, then you get even different colors. I experimented with this by just cranking this up like really high and you get kind of like a cool rainbow effect. This could be really interesting if you're doing a video where let's say you want to like say, yeah, this planet's composition is, you know, iron and water and this and that. And this kind of is a cool spectral photometer reading um, of kind of a planet's colors. 
Um, you notice here at the bottom, there's a little bit of clipping. Um, so I'm just gonna hit Control Z and just kind of back up to let's say this coloration here, because I think that this looks interesting. And I'm gonna run with this one for this final composition. Uh, and I'm just gonna kind of close up these again. And I'm gonna add a layer new solid, and I'm just gonna make kind of an off black background. Add a layer new adjustment layer on top and add noise. Set this to like eight. So we add some cool noise to this. And then, you know, I mean, you can, you can go crazy now and do other interesting things like um, add some, some light bursts. Let me add that, add the noise on top. Um, So this is a little bit more interesting if the coloration that you chose at the beginning was, let's say, red or maybe an orange. And then your offset was maybe set to five. Because now that kind of looks like a sun. There's a lot of clipping here going on and obviously you can mess with some of the settings to get a different clipping effect. Um, but that's kind of interesting. It, it kind of looks sort of like a sun. But um, I'm just gonna hit Control Z and just jump back to um, without that light burst because I think that this just looks really interesting as is. And I'm gonna go ahead and just render this out. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to follow the link down in the description to our Patreon account where you can download this project file or for the link to Skillshare. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching.